Greetings and welcome to the presentation of a sister story uh, by our Adrian's Mexican sisters. I'm Sister Peg O'Flynn, and today I'm going to have a conversation with our sister Noreen Burns, who is known as Noni to some people. She's going to explain that. And her religious name is Sister Joseph Patrick, and she'll tell us how she got that name. So we enjoy this conversation. Noni presently resides in Chicago. Are you in a suburb? Uh, Westchester. Westchester. Okay. And she'll explain her ministry, et cetera. So let us begin and not lose a minute on my talking. So Noreen Burns, you may tell us a little bit about your upbringing and your family dynamics and ministries, a ministry or two that was significant and whatever else you want to share. So it's yours. Okay, well, thanks, Peg. Um, I um, I was born in Chicago in um, 1938. Um, at one time in my life, I used to have a T-shirt, and I always said it described me to a T, because what it said on it was Southside Irish Catholic Democrat Sox fan. So, that's uh, if you wanted to kind of sum up uh, a part of my life that t-shirt would have done it so you should um, have brought the t-shirt and showed it yeah oh, oh I, I i don't have it now I, okay. I i have no idea what happened to it uh, but it it's no longer among my possessions but um i i was born into uh, um, an irish uh, catholic family uh my father charles burns was an immigrant from Clare oh. Island in County Mayo. Right. And um, my mother, Marie Corcoran, she was um, a native of Chicago, but her parents, uh, Delia and John, they came from County Sligo. Uh, but mom was born right here in the United States. And um, I had, uh, I was born into a family of five children. They're uh, all older than I, I am. They, I was the youngest. Um, and there were three brothers and, and two sisters. And we lived on uh, the south side of Chicago in St. Rita Parish, a very Catholic neighborhood. And uh, we had, a, a, our life was pretty normal, at least my life was pretty normal uh, for maybe five years. And then at, when I was five years old, my mother uh, became ill and she passed away oh. from, from uh, breast cancer. Oh my word. And so that left uh, my father and uh, five, five children, three of whom were boys in their teens. <laughs> and then my sister who was 10 and um, uh, myself who was five. Wow. And so, um, so I suppose in many ways our, our lives were different because our, we didn't have a mother in the home, but um, my father never remarried, uh, but he did, um, he was a very good man and uh, he took care of us very, very well and um, raised a wonderful family. And um, so that, you know, that, that in my fondest memory of uh, my dad, I have a lot of memories of him because I was really close to him. My fondest memory was probably that we had a car that was a 1940 Dodge. Mm -hmm. And of course, this would have been 1944, 45 on. And um, that car always was ready to take us to the beach in the yeah. summertime. And my dad would take us uh, certain days of the week when he wasn't working. Uh, he was a conductor on the uh, L train. So he really worked uh, for the CTA in Chicago, the Chicago Transit Authority. And he worked night shifts. So he wasn't, um, a lot of times in the daytime, he would be available up until maybe three, four o'clock, then he would go to work. But anyway, he would take us to the beach and uh, uh -huh. all the kids on the block knew and so they, they, it was, if you want to go to the beach, you, you'll be there on the running board oh, at, the running at nine, <laughs> at nine, at nine o'clock. And so that was, uh, that was really one of the fondest memories that I have of, uh, of my dad. Um, he was really, a, he really was a, a, a great man. 
And um, as I said before, he raised a, a very nice family. Uh, my brothers, uh, uh, two of my brothers uh, became lawyers. Uh, oh, my, my. Third, my, my third brother became a priest. And um, my sister was a, a wonderful homemaker. And I went off to the convent. So that Yes, sort and of, I'm sorry to hear about you just lost your sister. Yes, yes, I'm I did. Very sorry. Yes, yeah, she she was just a week short of her ninetieth birthday, <gasps> but, uh, oh. but she was uh, she was a wonderful, wonderful, uh, valiant woman. That's how mm -hmm. I like to describe her. Mm -hmm. She was a valiant woman. So so thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and your father, you know that that had to be so difficult for your father. Where did he get his support from? Besides the five of you, he. Loved well, really. yeah. I don't know if we if we gave him support or more problems, but anyway, I think a little bit of both. But um, my father had two uh, two wonderful sisters. Okay. Um, my aunt Mary and my aunt Nora, and uh, Aunt Nora was married, but she had no children, and Aunt Mary was a widow. So um, they, I can't say they raised us because they really didn't, but. I think you put it well, Peg. They gave my dad the support that he needed along the way because I'm sure he had no idea how to raise five kids. Okay, good. Okay. Um, I went to uh, grade school. Um, I went to St. Rita's and um, I was very young. I was not six years old yet when I was in first grade. And, um, but I had um, a wonderful first grade teacher. Her name was Sister Elaine Scanlon. Oh, yes. And she was so wonderful. She knew what a little motherless waif would need. And she, <laughs> and she gave that, that love and, and care and attention to me. And I've always been grateful to her. And, um, and, and many years later, when we met again, that when I was in the convent, uh, she, um, I told her, and you know how much she meant to me. So I'm glad I got a chance to tell her. She was definitely one of my first mentors, wonderful, know, many years ago. And um, I was thinking about the other teachers that I had there, the Adrian Dominicans. I have to say, I really loved them all. They just were all such wonderful women. And there were a lot of them because I think there were probably 24 at least because St. Rita's was a very large school. And it and, was a grade school only, was it? Yes, it was. Yes, oh. it was a grade school. But they had three of every grade yeah, and every yeah. every grade had at least 55 right. to 60. Yeah, <gasps> so, right. Those um, were the days, not that, anymore. Yeah. That's, that, that's true. And then um, another one of the sisters that I remember greatly from uh, grade school who, who influenced me a lot uh, because she introduced me to the Dominican saints. When I was in fourth grade, I had Sister Marie Imelda House. Okay. And she was a very little short sister, very short, because mm -hmm. when I was in fourth grade, I was eye to eye with her. I mean, <laughs> I was a tall kid and she was a short nun. But she was she was wonderful and she was very childlike in many ways. But I was a fourth grader and, you know, I, that was very I, I just loved her. I just loved her. And every day she would read to us from a book, many books that she had um, about the Dominican saints. And so when I entered the convent, I already knew about Dominic. I knew about Catherine of Siena. I knew about Martin de Porres. I oh, knew yes. about I knew about Rose of Lima. I even knew about Blessed Imelda because <gasps> of her of her name. So I I just loved the Dominican saints from the time I was in in the fourth grade. Wow. And I, I especially loved. Uh, of Catherine of Siena, because uh, she told us about the vision that Catherine Siena had in the sky. And in the book she read to us was called Saints in the Sky. And I just, I just thought, oh, I just, I just want to be just like Catherine of Siena. So, oh gosh, that's anyway, 
may, maybe that was where the seeds of that of the yes. Dominican vocation started, probably. Fourth grade, okay. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. started in the fourth grade. And then um, and my eighth grade teacher certainly was, uh, she was an unusual, wonderful woman. Her name was Sister Josita. And she uh, loved to, um, I think she had a great mind for science and astronomy. And she used to teach us the stories about all of the, the constellations in the heavens, the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia, wow. Cassiopeia in yes, huh? yes, in eighth grade. eighth grade. But the best part of it was she would always, a couple of times a year, she would say, now, if anybody wants to meet me at the back door of the convent and we'll go up on the roof at St. Rita's and we'll look at this at the all the different constellations so I mean it was she brought the the night sky alive to us about two or three times a year uh, we would meet her there at 7 30 at night it'd be dark as could be wonderful we'd troop up those stairs to the roof fourth floor and there, there we would, she would point out all the different constellations. She was just marvelous. So and I, I had a wonderful, I had wonderful grade, grade school memories. And um, when it came time to go to high school, I wanted to go to Aquinas, but it was uh, way too far uh, geographically. Uh, I lived really on the west, I mean, not on the southwest side. Aquinas is on the southeast side. A lot of, a lot of, ground between that so <laughs> so instead of going to Aquinas I I kind of I was able to compromise and uh, let my dad said that I could go to Mercy because uh, we had a neighbor girl that went to Mercy and um, she liked it and I thought I'd like it too and I did I had mm -hmm. uh, four nice years with the uh, with the Mercy sisters and um, when I went to the, when I went to enter uh, to come to Adrian, I was uh, surprised to learn that four of my or four of my classmates were going to be joining me, and um, you know in the Mercy High School to have four girls going to Adrian at one at the same time. Right, that was that was pretty spectacular. What did the Mercy nuns think? <laughs> Well, they they weren't too happy, but they were gracious about it. I'll have to say that, you know, so, but it was uh, Kathleen Waters. Okay. Okay. And she, when she was, she's in my crowd, uh, Joanne Lucas. Okay. Also came and she's in my crowd and Mary Kathleen O'Neill came, right. came six months later. So there were really four of the a class of 55 from Mercy High School that, came, that went to Adrian. So, and they're here. They're still here. Yeah. And they're still here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, there was a fourth, another one that came, uh, Helen Morsey. And uh, she left the, the community and she has passed away now. Okay. So, um, but she was uh, also with us. Yeah. I, can, I think her name was Sister John Edward Dean. I think that's I, name. yes, yes, I recall. Yeah. Right. Name I recall her. Yeah. Took. Yeah. So yeah. so anyway, that and um my they were, so my high school days were they were they were happy. They were very happy. Um hey, wait I, a minute, Noreen. How did you know you wanted to be an, either an Adrian Dominican? How did you know you wanted to be a nun to enter religious life? Well, you know what? Um, the sisters be, uh, were a very important part of, of my life, right from the very time I went to school. And I think because I didn't, my mother was dead, I think they looked out for me in a very different way than maybe they might look out for, you know, one exactly. of the other students. They didn't favor me at all. Don't no. know. <laughs> Believe me, they didn't. But um, I think they were, I, but, but I saw that kindness. And I saw a great joy in the sisters. And um, I wanted to have that in my life. And I guess in my in my mind, I just must have figured that, you know, if you want to be joyful, if you want to be happy and and prayerful, then that's what you do. You you become a sister. And um, and also I wanted to be a teacher. So mm -hmm. the Dominicans filled all those uh, wants for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think it was probably in the fourth grade that I really began to think about being a Dominican sister. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe it was your mom at work. 
I think mother mother had a job. I mean, if it was hard for my dad to raise me, uh, I'm sure my mother from heaven had a job doing it too. So it was. You know, uh, that death of your mother, that affected all you kids. It didn't just affect your dad, but oh, it yeah. affected all of you. Oh, oh my God. To think of what your dad had to, if he yes. even had time to grieve. Yeah. Right. And, and. Right. And he knew nothing. I mean, my father uh, was a self-taught man, so he didn't have a lot of book knowledge or any kind, but he had, uh, uh, he had faith. He had faith and great in love. God yeah. and love. great love and a real tenderness. But he didn't know what to do with us three fourths oh. of the time. So um, we, it, and, uh, but we all turned out okay, so. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's the best yeah. part. Yeah, that's right. And, and two people with, uh, you know, religious vocations, too. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, so. Well, after, well, I entered 1955. I belonged to the crowd of Dominic's daughters. Not that everybody else isn't Dominic's daughters, but uh, right. we, had that, we had that special crowd, na crowd name. And um, actually, um, my the bishop was, it was okay. I wasn't, you know, I, mean, I won't say they were the best fun days of my life, but um, I made a lot of friends. And, yeah. um, and so, um, but uh, my first, and, and then when I was sent out on mission, uh, my first mission was St. Jude's in Detroit. And um, I lived in a community of 24 women and probably 12 of us were under you know, a temporary vows. So it was really a, a very young, fun community. And I learned, I learned a great deal. The older sisters that were there were, were wonderful mentors for us. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, I, I did, I taught uh, at St. Philomena's in Detroit. I really liked that place because uh, uh, it was small. St. Jude's was a big school. But St. Philomena's was small. There was only, you know, uh, one of each each class. And I went up with the fourth. I started in the fourth grade, and I went up with them all the way to graduation. So it was wonderful, you know, to have that experience of uh, being with kids, you know, while they were learning in all four of their grades, you know. So mm -hmm. I don't know if they thought it was wonderful, but I, <laughs> I, I did too. I, I did too. It was really, it was really a good thing for me. And um, let's see. Then after that, I, I uh, went to. Um, I was, I was in St. Charles for one year, and then I um, went to St. Mary Star of the Sea, and uh, I was there for five years, and then I was at St. Philip's for. Uh, five years Aquinas for one year and then that uh, sort of was the year that uh, ended my uh, teaching career um, it, it, oh. after after 20 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. after uh, Aquinas was the last place that that I, I actually taught so you didn't get there in high school but you got there I got there, yeah, right. But I, I, I learned it was it was a very painful year all the way around. But um, I 1975. But I, I learned that I really, you know, I was way over my head okay. teaching teaching in high school. Um, so um, I, I, it was, uh, and then um, uh, I had the unfortunate accident of being in the wrong place at the wrong time and um, becoming the victim of an armed robbery and wow. shooting. And um, that, ha that took place in December of 1975. And- I forgot uh, about that. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's a, it's it's history, but uh, you know, I'm it's it's something that I I can I don't forget, and um, because it really was a, a something that turned my whole life around. And, Were you by um, yourself? No, I was with um, uh, Ramona. Ramona, yeah, Nowak. right, right. Uh, yes, we were we, uh, and uh, we we just were in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's just how I I. The best way to describe it yeah. without having to, having to go into no. all kinds of detail, right, you know, right, so, right, yeah, yeah. So, but um, so after that, um, I went back to the, uh, and finished the year at Aquinas, but that was my last. That was my last year of teaching, 
And then um, the community um, wanted to give me a, a bit of a break, rest perhaps, um, some time to recoup from that kind of a uh, an experience. And so I went to work at St. Mary Star of the Sea. It was a Penafort house at that time. And Noreen McKeo was in charge. Okay. And that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me in my life was to be with her at that time in my life. It was it was oh. just it was just perfect. It was just perfect. She was wonderful. And um, so then after that, um, I um, I became interested, well, by working with the retired sisters at the Pennefort House, uh, being Noreen's um, assistant, so, so to speak, um, I really began to realize that I, I had some gifts that I could use in uh, working with older people. Mm -hmm. And so I, I took some, I went to the University of Michigan one summer, took some gerontology classes and began to, you know, just build up some kind of a, a re resume in that area as, as opposed to teaching. And so um, after I left St. Mary's Star of the Sea, um, I went over, I went to St. Clair's and um, I was hired as a, a pastoral associate. In those days, that was, uh, nobody really knew what the job was and I didn't either. But um, for me, it started out with mostly working with the, um, in the, uh, with pastoral care mm -hmm. with, this, with the older people in, in the parish. And um, it was a good practice for me because uh, when I left St. Clair's, I, I went to Maria, to Maria to work as a, oh, a pastoral okay. minister. And um, I all this time I was continuing to you know, take classes. I never did get a next, another degree in it, but I began to keep up uh, with with the, aging. With, with the with the aging and um so uh, I loved my time at Maria I had five uh, really uh, wonderful years I love my time at St. Clair's too I have to say that and I love my time and following that at Maria and um oh my goodness here after that after Maria I um I went back to Chicago and um, I was, uh, by this time I had gone through CPE and I was certified as a, a chaplain. So I thought I wanted to get a, you know, ministry in the mm -hmm. hospital. And I did, um, I did send resumes. I did have interviews and um, I, I wasn't, well, a couple places said, no, no, is that's okay. I mean, I, you know, uh, some places said that, uh, um, they, they would let me know. And then one place said, you know, you know, they actually gave me the papers to start to fill out. <laughs> and, um, but I didn't want to really go to that hospital. I knew that wasn't a good fit for me. I just knew it. Yeah. You know, what they would be asking me to do just would not fit in with my, my theology and, and my belief in path, you know, mm -hmm. how to how to care for people. So, right. so, but I and that very day, and this is where the Holy Spirit is at work. That very day, I went back to where I was living. I think I was living at Good Counsel at that time, and I had a telephone message from Joan Donovan, who was a pastoral minister at St. Dennis Parish, who was retiring, and she was calling to ask me if I wanted to um, take uh, take her place at St. Dennis's. And so I thought about it, and I prayed about it, and I decided that uh, pastoral ministry in a parish would give me plenty of exposure right. to hos hospital people and other kinds of pastoral care. So um, I took the job, and um, I, I spent 20 Why? wonderful years at St. Clair's, just wonderful. I just had the most uh, wonderful experience, and um and then, um, then the time came to retire, and um, so I uh, I moved uh, uh, after I I, I um, left St. Um, Dennis's. I I I went. I was living over by Midway Airport, that people would know in Chicago where that is, and I was a, a member of St. Symphrosa Parish, 
but um, I wanted to be active. I didn't want to be entire, entirely retired. No. So I, I was in the RCIA program over there at St. Uh, Semperosa, and I also uh, was uh, working as a volunteer at um, a homeless shelter one night a week and um, uh, the Literacy Center. Yeah. I worked at the Literacy Center. Okay, well, now we fast forward. And let um, me just ask one question before you fast forward. Um, and you don't have to go into it at length, but there's always a question, how did you know it was time to retire, so to speak? I don't know if anyone ever totally retires, but it was time to let go of that parish that you were at. Well, um, we had, uh, first, first of all, we had a change of administration. Okay. Okay. which was a very big, yeah. big change. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then also, um, I, I was having some physical problems. Okay. Um, and that, and that, you know, physical problems that, that, that were limiting what I could do as a right. pastoral associate, the mm -hmm. activity that I could be involved in, the, the movement, you know, the going to the hospital. Right, right, and right. That kind of thing. So that's, um, and, and I did, I, I went, I did one year of part time, and then I then I retired full time. And see, that's I think that's a real gift to have to know know yourself well enough to know when to let go. Yes, you yes. know of, of whatever it is, and mm -hmm. no one can tell you. You don't want anyone to tell you it's time. It's good if you can come right about that. Right. So so anyway, and then where are where do we find you now? Okay, you find me now um, in Westchester. I I moved here uh, in Westchester because uh, where I was living in Chicago, I was living with Mary Rita McSweeney, oh. and she passed away. Yes, and so um, I was all alone in a very big house, and um, the house was going to be on the market, you know, in a couple of months, and so it was time for me to to move on and. Um, uh, Eunice Drasva uh, invited me to come and live with her because her roommate, uh, Jude Van Balen, oh. had passed away. And so the two of us were, we were mourning together. Yeah. Uh, Really, nice. and uh, yeah. and we were both working at the literacy, and we were talking one day, and one thing led to the next, and so then I, that's how got how I got here. So and both of those deaths, the two of you, that were rather sudden and unexpected. Yes, yes. yes. just yes. like your mom. Yes, right. Yeah. Uh, right. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. where we find you. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's so you, it. Okay. So all those other things are, are, are I'm no longer doing any other uh, ministry uh, um, other than prayer presence. I, I'm very much aware of that part of ministry, but I, I'm now, um, I still have my connection with the literacy center. Yeah. 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 And, and that's uh, important. Yeah. But, but now I do it virtually. Oh, you do? I do. I have a I have a wonderful student that I'm teaching English as a second language to, who is from Algeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, she already knows French and she knows Arabic. So she's, but she's very, very, and she's very good in English. She's learning it very quickly. It's a real pleasure. I really enjoy it. Yeah, it is. It is good. Now, I have difficulty doing the tutoring with the mask on. I find that difficult. I think I would still find it difficult doing it virtually. I like to have the person in front of me, yes. but it's been hard for these last few years. To, you're so tempted to take the mask off as you're forming letters. You know, yeah, yeah. mine is from Venezuela. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you, you know that uh, I don't wear a mask. I don't well, wear a mask. in person, we have to. Oh, so I, I see. Oh, you're in. Oh, virtu oh, yeah. Oh, virtually. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right, now, um, what brings joy to your heart? You're, you seem as a, with all you have lived through, uh, you seem, you've always been a very joyful, hospitable presence about you. Yeah. What, how, how, how has that happened? Well, I don't, I don't know how it happened. I mean, I, I know that I was, all, as a kid, I was always kind of happy-go-lucky in spite of, all the problems that we had, I didn't, yeah, you know, I yeah. didn't even 
see, I never saw them all as big problems, you know, yeah. until I got older and looked back, you know, I thought, uh -huh. wow. Uh -huh. But anyway, um, I don't know. I, I, I know what brings joy to me. Um, uh, living in community gives me great joy. I, I do not want to be living alone. Okay. Uh, um, eating a rainbow ice cream cone. <laughs> Good, good. People, That's what, those are the kind of answers that are nice to have. People from part. Chicago, yeah. <laughs> uh, looking at my little grand, great grandnieces and nephews, how much I love little children. Yes, they yes. Always, they, they always, they always bring joy to me, and right. um, and my friends, good. my friends, and uh -huh. I, you know, people, people that are acquaintances, a long time acquaintances, and people that I just have known for a short time that our friends mm -hmm. is there anything about you now maybe a few of your friends might know but that <laughs> the rest of us would say oh you mean Noreen Burns Joseph Patrick I didn't know that about her do you have anything like that to share oh I don't know a I, short I don't know. story I, I don't know about that except that I probably have always had a, a secret desire to be a dancer Oh, good. Have you ever taken dancing? No, no. Yeah. Just, just uh, you know, when I see them dance and I just think, oh, I just wish in my next life I want to be a dancer. It's You're still in a good life right now. I said I always wanted to be a movie star. So uh, maybe we could do something about that. <laughs> we could put oh, a show, yeah. on, a show oh, on or something. All right, two other things. I, oh. I promised at the beginning. How do you, why do some people call you Noni? Oh, um, it, it's an Irish nickname for Nora. Oh, and, I uh, see. My, my family has called me Nora. My family always called me Noni. And one summer after I, went, after I was in, already in the convent, I was studying at DePaul. And um, I was living at Aquinas Convent. And um, they had a big, their telephone system was whoever answered the telephone called for the sister on a microphone, on a PA that went through the whole house, okay? So one Sunday morning, the silence of the convent was broken by a phone call. And, and then I, next thing you know, I hear on the PA, Aunt Noni wait, wanted on the phone. <laughs> well, nobody had ever called me Noni, but as soon as the nuns heard that, that's that's all they needed and everybody started so and that was a long time ago so it's it's I just go by that name now that's nice that's nice it, we're comfortable with you if we can say Noni now Joseph Patrick I know you're that's not your father's no. name your no brother's? it wasn't it wasn't it was a, a it was a combination of names that I had handed in Okay. I, I couldn't even tell you what they were, except one had Joseph in it and one had Patrick in it. And Mother Gerald took them and put them together. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, as we kind of wind up right now, is there anything that I didn't ask that you wish you were all ready to ask, to answer? Anything else, your words of wisdom to leave us with? Oh, well, I, 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 I was thinking about... Um, you know, just something that it maybe uh, would describe all of our lives, but um, it was just a quote that I had read uh, from Mother Teresa that um, not everybody can do great things, but everybody can do small, everybody can do small things with great love. Right, so right. That's, right. That's, that's, how, that's how I'd like to be remembered. Very good. And that's exactly what Sister Elise said in her homily last week about the importance of love yes bringing love into and accepting the love that people offer to us and also putting it back out there mm -hmm. so sister noreen noni sister joseph patrick in the name of the congregation i again heartily thank you for your willingness to share your story with us you it's, are very it's our history and as mm -hmm. i always say if you don't tell the story somebody else will and God knows what they're going to tell. But there's something else as we're getting to learn, uh, know from each other. And I got this from someone. It was a quote from Pope Francis. We can learn so much from one another. Yes. It's not just about being better informed about others, but rather about reaping what the spirit has sown in them, which is also meant to be a gift for us. 
So you, the Holy Spirit spoke to us today through you and your life. Yes, it sure so did. So I thank you. 